The pituitary cancer is characterized by uncontrolled, cancerous growth of cells in the pituitary gland, which is a pea-sized gland located behind the eyes and below the front of the brain. The pituitary gland produces vital hormones that play a substantial role in regulating critical functions of the body. Pituitary gland tumors are rare and usually non-cancerous or benign. Most of these tumors produce hormones and are termed as functioning. Non-functioning tumors are the ones that don't produce hormones. Common types of benign pituitary tumors include adrenocorticotropic hormone-secreting ACTH tumors, growth hormone-secreting tumors, prolactin-secreting tumors, and thyroid-stimulating hormone-secreting tumors. In the U.S., only a few hundred cases of pituitary cancers have ever been recorded and the majority was diagnosed in older people. About 75% of cases were diagnosed after death. Of all the pituitary tumors, benign tumors account for about 30 to 40% and are most commonly observed in young, reproductive age women and men in their 40s and 50s. Exact cause of pituitary tumors is not known, but a great deal of research is being done to identify the underlying etiology. It is believed that genetic and environmental factors combine to cause this cancer in the ways that are not completely understood. Pituitary macroadenomas, benign tumors which are larger than one centimeter in size, and cancers, whether functional or non-functional, can press on nearby nerves or parts of the brain to give rise to weakness of eye muscles, double vision, blurred vision, loss of peripheral vision, sudden blindness, headache, dizziness, loss of consciousness, and stroke. Destruction of normal parts of the pituitary gland can cause a shortage of one or more pituitary hormones and, depending on which hormones are affected, symptoms might include weakness, feeling cold, headache, nausea, constipation, lethargy, loss of body hair, unexplained weight loss or weight gain, menstrual changes, erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, interest in sex, gynecomastia, growth of breast tissue in men, and fatigue. Large pituitary tumors can sometimes press on the posterior part of the pituitary, causing reduction of the hormone vasopressin, ADH, which can lead to loss of too much water in the urine. In this condition, the person urinates often and feels very thirsty as the body tries to keep up with the loss of water. If left untreated, it can cause dehydration and dyselectrolemia, which can lead to coma and even death. The major symptoms from growth hormone secreting adenomas, somatotroph adenomas, are caused by having high GH growth hormone levels. Signs and symptoms include very rapid body growth, joint pain, disproportionately tall height, and increased sweating. In adults, the long bones can't grow anymore, even when GH levels are high, so they develop gigantism. But bones, hands, feet, and skull can grow throughout life, and it leads to a condition called acromegaly. Signs and symptoms include growth of the skull, hands, and feet, deepening of the voice, wider spacing of the teeth, protruding jaw, high blood sugar, kidney stones, heart disease, headaches, vision changes, thickened skin, numbness or tingling in the hands or feet, thickening of tongue, leading to sleep disturbances such as sleep apnea and increased growth of body hair. High ACTH levels secreting pituitary tumors can give rise to symptoms such as unexplained weight gain, purple stretch marks on the chest or belly, increased hair growth, acne, swelling and redness of the face, depression, headache, easy bruising, vision changes, high blood pressure, hyperglycemia, decreased libido, sex desire, menstrual irregularities, and weakening of the bones. Diagnosis of pituitary cancer is made by medical history, careful and comprehensive clinical examination, routine lab tests, special tests, and neuroimaging, CT and MRI of brain. Treatment of pituitary cancer involves a team of medical experts, including a brain surgeon, neurosurgeon, endocrinologist, and a radiation oncologist. The standard of care includes surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy, either alone or in combination. Surgical removal is usually necessary if the tumor is pressing on the optic nerves or is overproducing certain hormones. General surgical approach includes transnasal transphenoidal surgery and transcranial approach, craniotomy. Large tumors may be difficult to remove in the transnasal way, especially if a tumor has invaded nearby nerves or brain tissue, and craniotomy is the preferred approach in such situations. Radiation therapy can be used after surgery or as a standalone therapy if surgery isn't an option. 
Radiation therapy can be beneficial if a tumor returns after surgery or persists and causes signs and symptoms that chemotherapy don't relieve. Methods of radiation therapy include gamma knife stereotactic radiosurgery, external beam radiation, and proton beam therapy. In case of prolactin secreting tumors, prolactinomas, Cabergoline and bromocryptine can be given, which are associated with causing decrease in prolactin secretion and often reduction in tumor size. For growth hormone secreting tumors, somatostatin analogs can be given, which cause a decrease in growth hormone production and may shrink the tumor. Pegvisament is another type of drug which can block the effect of excess growth hormone on the body. For more information about pituitary cancer, list of expert doctors, and ongoing clinical trials, please visit www.expertdocs.com